Hello, and welcome to another edition of the book review blog. Um, the next book that I'm going to review is uh, Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King. Um, if you are familiar with my reviews and know and have been a fan of my reviews for as long as you've, um, as long as I've done this, which is about a little over two or three years, um, a while back, oh goodness, uh, maybe almost two years ago or maybe a year and a half ago, um, I did a review on the Stephen King book Gerald's Game, which was about a woman who um, was handcuffed to a bed and relived um, a summer when she was a kid and something bad happened to her then. Um, in the early 90s, Stephen King wrote um, Dolores Claiborne and Gerald's Game um, together. And they were similar in one very big way, um, which I will go into in my review. But um, that's kind of important when you read that because, you know, you'll learn, um, you'll pick up on it um, if you have read both books. So anyway, all right. Um, the premise of Dolores Claiborne and the way that it is written is very different than the Stephen King books that I've read so far and mostly anyone that he's re written um, so far. The book is has no chapter breaks, um, has no, you know, in in between chapter breaks. If you um, if you're familiar with Stephen King books, he does that a lot where like if he'll start with a chapter uh, like chapter one, he'll and then like underneath it'll be like one and then two and then three. You know he go on and on before the next chapter. Um, very similar to kind of like how an outline is done, uh, except for the letters. Um, but this one doesn't have one and or anything like that, and it makes sense because in this book, Dolores Claiborne, who is a at the time a a woman in her mid sixties. Um, is giving a statement at a police station of whether or not she killed her employer. Um, the, um, she has worked for this woman named Vera Donovan, uh, being basically a maid or a housekeeper, um, ever since the 1960s, let's say, or maybe like late or mid to late 50s. Um, and it's the present time, so it's about 92, 93, let's say. And um, her employer, Vera Donovan, who is an older woman and she has uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, um, has died. And with, simil with excruciating circumstances, um, it just kind of seems that outsiders, that Dolores killed her. And... So Dolores is there telling her story of and telling why she didn't kill Vera Donovan. And while telling this that part of the story, she tells of the time in her life when she was not Dolores Claiborne, but Dolores St. George. And she was married to a man named Joe St. George. And... Joe St. George is one of those um, big villains in uh, Stephen King books, except there's no nothing supernatural about him. There's nothing, um, you know, anything like that. He's just a, not a nice guy because he beats his wife. Um, that's the first part about that. Um, the first bad thing about Joe St. George. And... Um, Throughout the story, just tells about how they met. Um, in most of the story, they've been married for, um, you know, a while. They've got three kids. Um, Selena is their oldest. Uh, Joe Jr. is their middle one. And Peter, or Little Pete, is what she calls her youngest. And um, they talk about, again, it just kind of talks about life with Joe and when... He's always kind of been abusive to her, um, just giving her, like, you know, slaps or 
uh, verbal abuse um, definitely is part of that. And she just kind of lived with it because she grew up in a home where um, her father beat her mother. So in her mind, it's just what you do or it's just how you live. But um, there was a time when he had struck her across the back with, I think, a piece of firewood or something where she just had it and she hit him back, basically, and said, you're not going to hit me anymore. And so that kind of stopped that part. And um, I think Selena was about 12 or 13 at the time. So they'd been married for about uh, 13 or 14 years uh, by that point. So again, this is like 13 years of taking this type of abuse where it finally stopped. So, but again, life with Joe is not, you know, the best um even though the violence or the beating had stopped, Joe is an alcoholic. And so part of that, uh, the alcohol kind of maybe fueled his rage or his abuse. Um, again, it's not ex an excuse exactly or a reason, but again, it probably fueled it. Um, and so Dolores starts working for Vera Donovan. And Vera is... Um, <laughs> Uh, Dolores calls her like a high class bitch, basically. Excuse my language. She is, you know, she's just like a hoity toity woman. Um, she, she's very comical in this, in this book. Um, she originated from Baltimore and she, um, goes to where Dolores, or she's a summer person. Um, it's kind of funny if you read, um, a lot of Stephen King books, you'll learn about, you know, how people from Maine talk about summer people, which must be a, um, a really real thing for, for like Maine and New England is, I'm sure it is. Um, but Dolores and Vera live on an island called Little Tall Island. And, and it's not too far from Maine, the mainland of Maine. Um, to where, like, Selena and her brothers go to school on the mainland. Um, you know, Dolores, excuse me, Dolores goes to in the mainland for shopping and, you know, that, that type of stuff. They just take a ferry um, back and forth. So, um, so Vera has, used to be just a summer person, but then her husband died and her kids don't visit her anymore, so she's just decided to live on the island full time, like all year round. And so Dolores works for her all year round, which is good, you know, good money for her, good money for our family. This is a very working class family. So um, one thing that Dolores notices is that as her daughter Selena is growing up, um, again, Selena is about maybe 12 or 13 years old, she starts to change where she, you know, she's a beautiful girl, Dolores says, but she is starting to dress more tomboyish and kind of frumpy-ish. Um, she's not really paying attention uh, hygiene-wise. She doesn't wash her hair. She doesn't, um, you know, do anything like that. And so she really pressure, she notices this and confronts Lena about this and really kind of pressures her into explaining why she, you know, isn't beautiful anymore is what Dolores said. You know, she's like, you used to be pretty. Why aren't you pretty anymore? You know, why don't you um, take care of yourself? And Selena tells Dolores about how her father is uh, molesting her and abusing her, which, of course, is a big eye-opener to Dolores. She never knew that. She never, um, she could have never imagined that her husband would do that. And so she confronts um, Joe about it, and Joe, you know, it was, of course, Mr., um, no, I didn't do this, she's lying, she, you know, oh, she, dress, she dresses so, you know, so slutty, so sexually that, you know, blah, 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 and, you know, um, but he does agree to stop, and he does, um, and then there's a time when, um, Dolores realizes, or Dolores has been keeping, um, um, savings accounts for her children. And there's a time when she wants to leave her husband and says, you know, that's enough. Like the, the abuse was one thing, but the, 
you know, the molestation of Selena is kind of the straw that somewhat broke the camel's back. There's more, wor there's worse things later, but, you know, in her mind, that's it. So she decides to, you know, get the kids and leave. And so she goes to the bank and to draw this money, and she realizes that the money has already been drawn. There, It's nothing anymore. And what her husband did was he made it believe that, you know, he's a joint person on this account, so he legally had the authority to do this. He drew the money out of your account and put them in a separate account with only his name so that Dolores couldn't get it. And so um, with that money or, you know, and with that, um, that really broke this camel's back, let's say. And so then she decides to confront him about it. And there she, and then she decides that I can't not only confront him, I've got to kill him somehow and, you know, and make it look like an accident, make it, you know, I, I don't know if she had that in her head yet, but what is happening in, coincidentally, in Little Tall Island and in Maine in general is that there have been talks of that there's a solar eclipse and it's a complete solar eclipse and Vera is really, you know, big on this and she's all in like a hullabaloo because she's like, I want to see this. This won't happen again for um, a very long time. Uh, actually, I think in the book, it's funny because I think they say the next time that this would happen is um, 2016 and this was back in like 1963. So, you know, hey, if there's a solar eclipse in 1916 over Maine, that would be awesome. Um, anyway, but... Um, Dolores um, realizes that this day of the solar eclipse, which is July 20th, 1963, is her chance to kill her husband without anybody else in the town knowing. Because everybody else on the town will be gone. They'll be on the ocean, in, in like, you know, on a ferry or in another part of the town um, watching the solar eclipse. And so... You know, she stays home with her husband. Her, she sends her kids off. They, they watch the solar eclipse together, or part of it, and they get how um, she gets him to, or she gets him riled up, and she kind of goads him into getting angry and coming at her and chasing her down her street, uh, down to her, like, property or something. And it just so happens that she discovers earlier in the book that there is an abandoned well in on her property. So she makes it to run to the well and run and jump over it because she knows where it is, but her husband doesn't. And her husband ends up falling down the well, and eventually that's what kills him. And so... And nobody saw it. Um, you know, her his body wasn't discovered until maybe a week or so later. Um, you know, where she's filing like missing missing persons reports, and you know, trying to make it look like an accident. Um, and again, and that was part of her all this confession is that saying yes, you know. But as the years rolled on. Again, this is a really small island in a small town, so everybody kind of figured that she killed her husband, but there really was no proof. So she became, you know, the gossip mill or the gossip, the gossipers like, uh, dream. And so, um, that's basically the point of the book or basically the whole plot is that within telling a story about how she didn't, wasn't, um, responsible for her employer's death because her, uh, Vera throughout the years, um, really, again, as she developed like Alzheimer's and developed dementia, she became she became really paranoid and really seeing things that weren't there. So, one of the things that she did was she thought that she kept seeing dust bunnies, um, even though you know Dolores kept her house spick and span, so there would be no dust bunnies. And there was and Vera was so afraid of these dust these you know dust bunnies that weren't there that she got up and 
ended up falling down the stairs is how she died. Um, and it, it happened that Dolores was cleared of everything, both her, her husband's death and Vera's death. And, you know, it, and that's where the book ends. Um, it, it's hard to give a review without saying the spoiler, so I'm sorry. Um, it was a very good book, though. I did, you know, there were a couple parts that I didn't mention. But um, the how it's compared to Gerald's game is if you've seen my review of that, and if, if you haven't, um, you know, please, please feel free to do that. But both Dolores and Jesse um, Burlegame, is, who is the character in Gerald's game, um, they both had something important happen to them on the solar eclipse on July 20th, 1963. So... Um, Again, that's how, why Stephen King wrote both of these books in in tandem, is what they're called, or together, and kind of links them together based on this eclipse story. So anyway, that's it. Uh, the next book that I'm going to read by Stephen King is Insomnia, and that's it. And I bid you all farewell, and happy reading.